really, really nice is that husband and wife is here again. I, I just had to stress. <laughs> I just had to stress on that because I had a conversation about companionship a couple sessions back and I think it's something we take for granted. You know, support comes in all different forms and all different merits. And to see you guys doing this together, I like it. I applaud it and I'm here for it. So my love, good morning. Greetings to Come you. Come to the mic to me, right? Sure. Um, well, this morning I um, I tickled the fancies of persons with my opening statement. So everybody's on a high this morning. <laughs> So go ahead, introduce yourself to the nation, and let's take it from there. Wholeness and balance vibrations, Trinidad and Tobago, yes. and most importantly, the hub. Mm -hmm. I pray you are having a wonderful day. I thank God for the opportunity to be here. My name is Shaliza Belgrove, mm -hmm. and I am your self-love tour guide. Yes. Now, the reason I found this really fitting, it starts. We came off of the heels of your husband who is centered around the dynamics of men. And one of his things is that of self-care, self-accountability, self-love. Um, I'm to call it the love guru at this. And we're gonna coin that term this morning. We're gonna coin it. The love guru is sitting in my studio with me this morning. That has a nice ring to it, the love guru. The reality is that love is something that it's on the, it's on the, ladder, the bottom of the ladder currently. Um, if we take a look at what has happened to us socially in the past couple of days, there are a lot of children who are coexisting in households where love is not the core of the home. Let's talk about love holistically and then let's talk about love individually. I love this topic mm -hmm. because as someone who is teaching love and being love, yeah. most importantly, children are in a very unique space. Mm -hmm. And as parents and uh, citizens, we have a responsibility yeah. to yeah. understand yeah. how to love ourselves first and not ourselves only because we cannot give from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. We cannot be our brothers and sisters keeper if we are not first understanding how to love ourselves. And that requires us to be self-aware, yeah. to know ourselves. And you know what? You evolve as you know ourselves. So even being intentional and aware mm -hmm is a very key component to the love that we're seeking. In our society and in the world at large, we see a lot of conditions, hmm. a lot of reasons why you should love somebody. But do we understand that love is service? Love is not about you. Yeah. I mean, it's self-love I do it, and yeah. it sounds strange to say it's not about you, but love is a serving thing. Love is about understanding who you are enough to put yourself on pause to go out of your way or your schedule to do a thing and many people happen upon children i like that many people happen upon children now before we elaborate on that i had someone via facebook who says last week even though you are giving love and you're not receiving of it don't think of yourself as being weak. And I sat with that over the weekend. But you are receiving love. But I'm, 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 I'm taking it from the perspective where probably, you now this is us trying to decipher what was said, probably the manner in which you expect to receive love, it's not given to you, so therefore, you tend to think that you are not receiving love. That is correct because it is a condition. So I could only love you from the measure that you love yourself. So if there's a deficit inside of yourself where there's a void, we're speaking about children, so I'm going to introduce inner child to our conversation. Mm -hmm. Inside of each of us, we have an inner child. A three-year-old, Shaliza and Tamika, and members of the hub who may not have received attention, may have been rejected. I come too early with the gems this morning. 
finding come on a little too early let's start with I always like to make it personalized so people could understand when I talk and when my guests talk we are not talking down to them but we are talking to them you at five years let's recall that phase of your life emotionally I was a very bubbly child <laughs> I was uh, at five years old I was a very people oriented and, and active because of the environment that I had been cultivated in mm -hmm. now I hail from a family that is very rooted and grounded in legacy and heritage mm -hmm. and we value prayer most importantly so we would have family meetings and prayer meetings not just with our immediate family but the extended family and friends would come and gather at my parents home to have prayer so as a child it was an honor to sit at the feet of my elders and to hear them express with this awe and this reverence their beliefs and their ideologies. And mm -hmm. now that I'm an adult, I, I may not always agree with everything, but I value the community that was available. Mm -hmm. That was not just my family, but the entire village in different spaces to do a thing. So my five-year-old self was very, very jolly. Um, at five, there are things they don't understand sure. that are happening around you. So I would say it's the purest, innocent form of myself that my memory can assess. Of course, with healing, you go and you see all the traumas and the environmental things that weren't so pretty. Like you might have adults who don't agree with ideologies and they bring in it into the environment of the child or me at that time and they're speaking in front of me in ways that I can't understand but it's impacting my subconscious mind yes. and I'm absorbing yeah. all of these different vibrations though there's this healthy foundation that has been laid we still have in our human experience and mm -hmm. nobody is perfect so therefore you still have all these parameters which I believe works for our good if we choose to be intentional about it and see life as working for us rather than against yes. us um, I'm listening to you talk and what is popping in my head is my child is not what I say, them, say for them to be, but my child is what they see me doing. That is correct. This is, this is sitting on the forefront of my brain right now and I really hope it registers because at this time, majority of the times is parents who are blocked on, grandparents, aunts and uncles. And I really hope if they take nothing from this, they take that. We are trying to build a society of persons and we are telling them what to do while they are looking at what we are doing. And Jerron Lewis, I don't know if you ever saw his video, in the start of his video, the young boy cussed the old man and the old man wanted to correct him and he was like, but you shouldn't talk. Because they are Dwelling in this environment where this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm existing in, this is what I'm coexisting in. However, an adult is now trying to push a different narrative down my truth. So it's confusion. It and, is. and you know, we always say, do as I say, not, not as, as I, I do. do. Mm -hmm. And I despise that statement because where then do we get the example? Correct. Correct. Um, Let's travel through your journey from there to here. I have this thing where I don't like people to think that their stories are unique. Their stories are, it's me alone. No, that is not the world coexisting. I have this thing for me too. And the only how we could kick into me too is once conversations are sparked. Once people are open, once people are vulnerable. So let's travel from them to know that's a deep journey you know yes <laughs> <laughs> that's a deep journey um i have had a unique opportunity in life and though it's not unique to me alone mm -hmm. i feel as though each of us all over the world have been placed here with a mission yeah. and a mantle yes which gives us a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And since we journey in, I think it's very important that I say this first. In order to become the self-love tour guide, 
I believe God places us in experiences, and me in particular, through the experiences of those we are called to serve. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we are going through these experiences, we demonize them, or we berate them, or we judge them before we receive the gem that comes out of the experience. Mm -hmm. Simply because we have no examples of how to do just that. So in this part, uh, towards healing, which is a calling for me personally. It's not me sending myself at all. Yeah. Um, when I received the call, I had to sit and go back in hindsight and unearth all these experiences that I have had because I thought they were isolated instances, as many of us do. We think that in life, these things are disjointed and not yeah. connected, not realizing they are molding and shaping the very fabric and essence of who we are it's knitting it all together mm -hmm. so i have to lay that as the foundation to come forward so in my life i've experienced a myriad of traumas as we would call them in today's world and i couldn't process what those traumas are mental health wasn't as popular when i was growing up we didn't have social media and google um, yeah. we had we, I come from before dial-up internet, so, oh, <laughs> so I didn't have the opportunity to just go at the fingertips to figure out what this was. I literally had to sit with myself and assess and through a lot of meditation and stillness in time. And because of the grounding that I had from my parents and coming from an environment of NGO work and social development helped because... I grew up in an environment where my parents' mantra was the realization of selfless expression and selfless service to humanity. Mm -hmm. Now observing that as a child from my parents and seeing them serve in this, in this selfless way, I saw two things. You could martyr yourself for the cause and not fill your cup. You could martyr yourself for your cause and not, not fill, fill your, your cup. cup. So you're giving from an empty cup at times, not realizing to you. Eh? It's not that you intend to do that, you know. It's just it has so much need. It has so much people need assistance that you don't, you don't see your nose. You're talking to me, you're not seeing your nose. Yeah. You have to focus to yeah. see your nose. Yeah. So because we don't see our nose, we don't realize when we're on dregs. So on the heels of their mantra, I determined self first, but not self only. Self first and not self only. And many of us do not maintain ourselves, even when we look around our society. As I journey through and I, I, I looked at moving from rapes and moving from uh, kidnapping situations and nearly being human trafficked and coming straight up to now. And I see these, all these experiences as everybody going through something somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you don't really take the time to assess what is this communicating to me? Why have I attracted this? Because it seemed grim and it might be a hard thing to hear. But the truth is, our life externally is a reflection internally of either ourselves or our bloodline. So mm. at some point, somebody has to say it ends with me. Because how much time we would really say me too to a tragedy? Correct. Correct. Like we have to get to the point to say, listen, I need to sit with this. And if you don't need to do all, you can pick one. You could start, I started with truth because I find there were too many lies that I didn't understand and I decided truth would be the place I would start. I want to know the truth. And if I don't need to know your truth, I can start with what is my truth, mm -hmm. moment by moment. Mm -hmm. And from truth, build. I believe truth or happiness never both. Sometimes when somebody tells you the truth, you don't like not it. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. You're Agreed. not happy. Agreed. You can get to happy but you're not necessarily happy because it's not something you want to hear. You want to be praised. You want, and that's our egos. Our egos want to be celebrated and praised. I want to be liked. Acceptance. Yeah. Want to be liked. That could be trained through self-esteem and esteem in the environment very early. Mm -hmm. But how often do we have relatives or friends who start our day by telling us, you're a gift? <laughs> Probably on your birthday. But every day is your birthday. Probably on your birthday, these things happen. People tend to show you that, that love on birthdays. And then we wait for Mother's Day and Father's Day. And yeah. So what happened with the rest of these? We just have to maneuver through. We just have to push through. We just have to 
you just have to have you just have to go so this is why self-esteem becomes important because we would get up and go on our phones and message others before we look in the mirror and say hi self i love you today i appreciate that you are here in the land of the living this is it literally says it in the term self-esteem is you esteeming yourself you are speaking in high regard mm -hmm. to yourself because all you have is you at the end of the day everything else is a bonus hmm. everybody else is a bonus me being in the hub is a bonus to my life experience because i could have got up and not be here mm -hmm. i could have not got up at all and we don't know what that would be because I don't know if you have anybody who came back and told you their stories. I mean, we hear many people had near death experiences, but they're talking about die and come back and tell you what Correct. they met. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what it's like to be um to be over there. Yes. Yes. You know. So we have a unique opportunity where it comes to really being intentional with yourself. A lot of us exist in true life because you think you have all these things that you have to do. You don't have to do anything. It was not a human doing. You're a human being. But you don't take any time to be. You always think you have to become something. You could just be still. So this morning, I um, I purposefully came here to ignite the nerves of my listeners. And two words popped into what I uttered this morning. To do and to perform. Those are two words in the statement that I made this morning that send people off their nuts. Someone message me via WhatsApp and say, Tamika Harrell off this morning. Morning, sir, morning, morning. But um, I did it because I think sometimes words have a way of triggering something that we are hiding from. I think words have a way of igniting a thought that you suppressed and thought you forgot but then someone says something and it, does, it just triggers this suppression that you were dealing with however long and I have to agree with you when you say that most of us are just existing and we are just performing many may tell you that well I reached my 60s already I live all my life or I live my life and look at me today that is something that is customary. It is a utterance that is made by many. But however, my question to that is always, what is the quality of you living 60 plus years on this earth? Were you doing what you were designed to do or were you part of a performance that was laid out for you? Again, I know there are many persons right now who wants to know what side of the bed I woke up on this morning because majority of the times they are, uh, they are in agreement with the things that I said, but this morning is not one of those mornings. But that is the question. You lived 50, 60 plus years. Did you live doing what you wanted to do or were you part of a performance that was handed down to you? And this now carries me to what you are saying in the essence of self. This now leads me to the center of when we sit and we reflect on the manner, the quality of life that we have, can we truthfully say that we are contented with what we have accomplished thus far? This is a beautiful place to be. There's something that is called the drifting mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you come from a very religious background or a spiritual background for some, mm -hmm. you have encountered the drifting mind. The drifting mind is what drives you to fear. And a lot of people perform and uh, go through the motions of life because of their drifting mind. Now, it's no indictment on them or their family or their parenting or anything like that. It's just the structures of the society that we have come to know. Mm -hmm. The church, the school, the government, everything has a system that works along with the drifting and the distraction of your mind. Mm -hmm. So basically, we have an indisciplined society. 
because we are not disciplined enough to sit and be intentional with our legacies. We are not intentional with who we are and why we are. We don't ask ourselves the high value questions that would spark critical thinking hmm. to understand and understand why we came. We're doing that too late. What we're supposed to be doing first, we're doing last. So when we're talking about the drifting mind, you'll be told, study well, get a good, get job. A good job, provide, for the, provide for the family, go to school and get a degree, yes. and join the workforce. Yes. When you decide to become an entrepreneur, what are you doing not making any sense? Yes. Why are you trying to do that? Who tell you that is good enough? And then you get all of this added pressure when it is you choose to go the path less traveled instead of being celebrated because you chose your dream. Now, this is the drift in your mind. This is where the resistance coming in. Mm -hmm. You see, because there's an abundance of fear, false evidence appearing real in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And as an avid reader of the Bible, <laughs> fear is not something God gives us. For there's a scripture that says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And that tells me that you could be without power, you could be without love, and you could be without a sound mind. So you have a mind, but is it sound? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who is advising you in your mind? Guys, I'm going to open the phone lines in the last 15 minutes. Bear with us. Go ahead. So what, what are you feeding your mind and why? It takes great, real, ruthless bravery to break out of the indiscipline and the fear to move in faith. No matter what you see in your external reality to become, because remember you just have to be. So now you're choosing to become something different to your environment. Your environment tell you to do these things. Now, if you're like me, I did all those things. I went to school, I got two degrees, I came back out of school, and I went to the workforce, and I had experiences with elders who did not want to move out of the way. You're not going there, I don't irritate the people for the morning, you come in to stay that now to upset them even more. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? It's the truth, it's the truth. <laughs> you want them to get upset with me even more. They don't get vexed with me on this Monday morning. But it happens, so I chose the it's path still of happening. entrepreneurship. We've been going to a lot of old places and persons who have reached their marker. They refuse to make space for younger persons to grow and to strive and to come with new, refreshing ideas. I think many of us in this generation could attest to having that experience in workplaces, especially government institutions. But I think it puts us in a very unique space. Really, I mentioned about coming from dial-up internet. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that uh, right now there's a importance to observe the fast progression of technology. Yeah. I come from a school of thought where horribly do build goodness. <laughs> what happens when we rely so much on technology that we don't apply that same intentionality into our real lives? I just did a webinar. And was entitled is technology erasing that of humanity and I was in agreement with the statement that was made and you are saying a lot of things and in essence it's saying that we need to tap back into home we need to go back into the foundation where many of us came from because we are con we are living in an era where things and our children and our friends and our relationships and our marriages are quickly slipping out from our fingers and we are okay with that because we have options or seeming options yes let's let's let me be grammatically correct and putting in the work and the efforts and the building and the rebuilding is something now where it's becoming lower and lower and lower and lower. I like that you say that because 
there's a disconnect in the understanding of creation itself and there are many creation stories but when you really get to the nitty gritty of creation itself mm -hmm. we, the fact is we understand that we are here mm -hmm. we exist mm -hmm. we are present and there's a breath that we do not control vibrating through our being we didn't open our eyes we do have to tell our lungs to pump air yeah. nor our hearts to beat yeah. there's a technology that existed before there's a technology that has the sun in the sky and the rain to fall. So therefore, the grand architect of it all is present. Mm -hmm. And just like we hold our devices and we have apps and we have programs that running, we are basically the device trying to figure out who is the programmer. That too is distraction. Mm -hmm. Because you have come with a set of instructions. But you have to read your manual Many of us do not read the manual for the phone. <laughs> so we don't know what to do. So we only know parts, but we don't really know the fullness and the essence of what's happening. And, and you said home. And yeah, let's go to home. Because if a parent is to lead and a parent hasn't read the entire manual, how are you then going to effectively lead? So I like that she said effectively and lead home. So I'll present this to you. Many of us have homes that we love to adorn. The physical being big, the building, yeah. brick and mortar. What is inside of it and these things. But I present to the nation and yourself today that your first home is your body. Your home was constructed in the womb for nine to ten months. Your first home was built in the incubator of our womb this flesh that we have is our first home but a lot of us think that the home is us so we nitpicking on the size the shape of the home distraction again not realizing we are a soul and a spirit dwelling in a home newton newton said in his third law energy can neither be created nor destroyed it moves from one form to another. Correct. So as a spirit, we are an energy. So we cannot be created nor destroyed. We move in from one form to another. So therefore, we move from this home to another realm. To another home. But and if we do still... Most times in different religions, when somebody physically leaves us, there is a belief that spiritually, they still coexist within us. It is so. Yes. So... Leading yourself first effectively will then trickle into the principles that we put in the foundation of the heritage and the legacy. Because if you don't understand how to treat your home and who you are, you would not have the equipment to do it. And parenting is no easy task. Um, Parents have a hard time. They're figuring it out too. Mm -hmm. Just like us. But mm -hmm. if you notice, we building on the foundation of what they laid. They did the best they could do with what they had. So instead of attacking the parents, we then have a responsibility to say, okay, they love me with the capacity of what they had and what they knew. And I receive it. Are taking what resonates for this junction in time and this now good for me and this now i don't want to think we should keep this moving forward we need to do a risk assessment i had a guest and she said the same thing she said she couldn't understand why her mother was how she was and why her father wasn't present when she wanted him around and then she said she sat with it years and she realized that they could have only given what they knew while she was expecting them to give more she had a big heart she has a big heart hmm. sometimes we have big hearts and we come as big beings because if you look at the generational cycle you move from two parents but your two parents it didn't start there they're your great-grandmother ovary make you 
someone just messaged me and said, learning to forgive parents. Hmm. And many times when we sit here, we try to figure out what is the issue with children. And I've never brought up the thought of what is the issue of parents. I've never done it. I have been trying and I've been searching to figure out why our children are how they are. But Tamika has never asked the nation, what is the issue with parents? What are some of the issues that parents had to deal with and are still dealing with? What are some of the coping mechanisms that parents decided to use but it really wasn't healthy? They use coping. Coping mechanism, eh? Hmm. <laughs> Listen, <clears throat> this is... I love things to have a holistic approach. So the burden or the responsibility wouldn't just be thrown on one sector. But I am honest enough to say that I have never stopped and looked at it from this side of the coin. And within doing that, I also have to acknowledge that some of the ways that our parents did things wasn't healthy. And it scarred many of us to this day. And then we move with those traumas and we give light to other humans. And we unintentionally pass on our scars and our traumas onto the child. And then we ask him, but why my child so and not stopping for a moment to self-analyze ourselves, our upbringing, our children, our scars, our traumas. So let's go this way. We have a mother and we have a father. Mm -hmm. The father holds the seed, the mother holds the womb. Mm -hmm. The womb is the incubator of the seed. So therefore, when you want a good seed, to germinate, he has to look at your soil, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about the wounding of the parents. I am not a parent biologically, mm -hmm. but I do have a lot of people like parents spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in my assessment, a lot of confusion comes in, especially with gender rules, because we're not Don't clear. talk about that. I get both for that this morning, right? The nation call me and the nation get vexed me this morning. <laughs> so don't talk about that. They love you. Leave them to love you now. Don't, I don't talk about gender rules. You don't talk about gender rules. You know, many man message man tell me, Tamika, you're off this morning. Well, we will have to be off together <laughs> because it's the truth. <laughs> I'll put it to you like this. Our parents did the best with what they had, yes. Mm -hmm. But there comes a time where we have to move from the coping mechanism Correct. and get to the roots. Correct. The roots are the matter, the foundation. But getting to the root of it comes with a lot of fear. Because as a parent now, you're telling yourself, if I start to be honest, my child might see me in a different light. Who's the parent and who's the child? This, but the thing is, whether parent or child, it's human nature. Mm -hmm. And most times we don't want to be naked. Let us agree to that. We can sure. all agree to that. Most times we don't want to be naked. So you know what? Let me try my best to see how I could keep this covered up. So my child would look at me, yeah boy, that's my mommy, that's my daddy. We're not taking that away, you know. But you have to call a spade a spade. And I think as parents, we have to be able to say, I have contributed to one of the reasons why X, Y, Z, Z case. Agreed. But um, I'll say this. I love that you said naked, especially because I hosted my first conference last year, mm -hmm. July, called Naked, mm -hmm. which was a play on words, Naked Identity. Right. And it was geared towards stripping away the layers of fear, imposter syndrome, <laughs> and all the things we wear as masks to cover and hide ourselves and this stem from straight back if you want to go to the genesis creation story mm -hmm. i'll get to that but i want to address what you're saying about the accountability yes we cannot take accountability if we don't know there's a problem correct 
and many of us have not been educated exposed told experience or experience that is something we underestimate experience is the greatest teacher because we now have any conversations that matter so mm -hmm. i bless the hub for having the conversations that matter because it is an understanding the rules i am fortunate i had two sets of parents i have my biological parents mm -hmm. who are also my spiritual parents and i have adopted parents and I had the opportunity to have them both married in my formative years. Mm -hmm. And now uh, it's interesting because yesterday was my birthday and I went to visit my parents. And you spoke some very key things and I was like, this is interesting. And I was telling them that, you know, I felt as though y'all raised me for a society that does not yet exist. So you can take your wife. And hold her by her hands and take her out in the studio so that we... what you are doing you are igniting not new thoughts you are igniting thoughts that have been there that have been suppressed for a long time you are igniting persons like ourselves who will continue to challenge the society that we are a part of you are now igniting a parent to self-examine themselves and ask themselves, am I keeping my child hostage? Am I asking my child to become someone that he or she is not supposed to be? Because I am fearful of them not reaching societal norms. And I want to ask, who cares? Not that we don't care about what you said, you know, but who cares about the societal I, I norm? Like. Correct. Are you here to fit in or to stand out? Change makers never fit in. Mm -hmm. This is not Tetris. Hmm. Tetris, when you had all the blocks and you'll move, Correct. you'll notice the line disappear. Correct. When you when you fit in, yeah. uh, when you stand out, you can't progress because yeah. it has something there holding back the yes. line. So this is an opportunity for us to really assess where we are. We have to it come back to being intentional again and stripping it off because who told us we need to wear these things as armor? Who told us that we need to fit this mole? And who said that mole is successful anyway? There's no evidence to show that it worked. When you look at the quality of life, the people who went that road, would you follow it? Like, would you take advice from that person now as you've seen their life progress? Are they fulfilled? Are they happy? Are they, are they whole? I um, saw something with entrepreneurs and they said one of their greatest deterrents happened to be their parents because their parents were always fearful that if they make this move they are then going to fail because they are not taking the safe route in terms of placing you know see yourself to, in a eight to four a nine to five where a paycheck is guaranteed where a retirement plan is guaranteed and one of the men said they could have made this move a lot sooner in their lives but his mother was constantly in his ears telling him son don't do it don't do it don't do it yeah. and he said if he, he said the older he become he realized it wasn't from a bad place mm -hmm. it was from a place of that protective instinct that any parent has for their child however his story wasn't eight to four or nine to five his story was creating what he had created by himself, for himself. You notice know, so he highlighted mother in that statement. Yeah, you want when I come to tomorrow, my callers call and say, see you, Tamika, we don't like you again. <laughs> you don't want to hear from me again. So, I'll, I'll, I'll simplify it, I'll simplify it. Because we spoke about naked, and the truth is naked, you know, you feel exposed when you hear the truth. Yeah. Because, remember, a lot of us hiding, you know. Mm -hmm. I believe in being who you are in real life online and everywhere in that's hard for many people to it takes effort it takes it, it takes effort that's hard let's talk to the child who is confused about their self-identity so we need to learn life the child who is confused, God is not the author of confusion. Your creator, the person that, you know, gave you this home and mm -hmm. sent you here, is not a 
chaotic vibration is a calm still and steady vibration a very loving vibration i love that so pure that sometimes we reject it because you think it's too good to be true hmm. the confusion is coming with the internal crisis of what mommy say and what daddy say what my teacher say especially if you're in this teenage state where you're now discovering self fallacy number one 30 life now begin girl i think we need to change that i think life now begins at 35 <laughs> at 35 because as at my age i'm like excuse me mommy i can pull out this form here for me because but i really think that we have been pushed that narrative but life really doesn't begin at 18 and 21 and 25 these are not the stages for when life begins. We are still transitioning from being in sheltered environments to now charting waters where you are beginning to be on your own. You are beginning to get responsibilities. You are beginning to self-check yourself. Have rent to pay, have a car note to pay, have pampers to buy, have school fees to pay. So now you have to put your life into categories. Right, so let's deal with that. So if we were in the UK or the US, you would find that the young people in those environments are more self-sustainable much earlier. But in the Caribbean, we, we are end. incubated. Yeah. We are incubated because aside from fear, our culture is like that. Mm -hmm. But there is this magic rainbow that we are expected to cross at 21 and to figure it out. Grow up. But you can't grow up if you wasn't taught. For example, my dad was very strict. And he had principles, and the principle was the principle. One thing that always stood out with me is he broke it down to the plant. He said to us, the plant is responsible for your oxygen. So if you do not water the plant and tend to the plant, you can't come inside and have food. And that song harsh to somebody. But at the time, I couldn't even get it at the time as a child, but as an adult where I sit doing self-love, I respect plants because of the contribution they add not just to myself but the entire planet because we get oxygen from the plants and i tend to them and i speak to them now when i have a relationship with my environment understanding that if i don't tend to this part i can't receive this part because it's the very fruit of the plant that feed in me so the intentionality that he took to break that down is because of his experiences and he imparted that particular wisdom. Like three good morning. Morning. Hi. Good morning. Hello, I'm Kavika. Mm -hmm. You hear me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you all kind of said this morning. You go ahead. Yeah, um, the, the young lady, they are very good. You, you, you must be our I'm now saying that in my head. I am now saying that in my head. Thank you, friend. Um, I have this lovely. <laughs> yeah, friends. Like poor good morning. Hi. Yes. Listen to this contribution I just received via Facebook. Was listening until the downright rejection of older people in the workplace, especially the government is looking to extend the retirement age. Listen, is the good lady offering to pay the bills of mature persons so their jobs can be given to young people? I glad you could explain it so I went I went go down on the list again of not being like correct Thank you so much, mommy. I have to bring her back. I have to bring her back. <laughs> have a wonderful day. I think that there explains the cycle of life. We are not here forever. Tamika, I appreciate the comments on Facebook. No, well, I and I appreciate have, the I caller. Have. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. We got real life experiences of Some, the two somebody. sides yeah. of the spectrum. Yeah. Um, I would not want to do you the injustice of paying your bills in your old age because of two things. If the heritage, and my father always talks about this, if the legacy and the heritage is built properly at a certain age, the youth could then provide for you in your heritage and your I'm legacy. That's one. Two, if you are intentional and you manage your resources throughout your tenure, you would be in a financially well place to sustain yourself. I don't think I'll ever jump into that. I think 
when I turn on the microphone tomorrow, do I get vexed now? <laughs> you see, I started on intentionality and being self-aware. And we have a habit, especially in the Caribbean, of blaming others for our plights. I have a peeve personally because we're in a space where everybody wants a right for something. Entitled to. Well, let's not even talk about entitled. entitled. To. But who wants the responsibility? You, there is a responsibility that comes with having a right. Personally, I believe that holistic wellness is the foundation of self-love. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know what holistic wellness even is. There are seven and eight arms that make you up. And uh, we often thrive on pride and gossip and other people's business in our society. And that is a fact. Oh, so turn off your mic because I find like you're just pointing fingers at people. And then they'll get back to me tomorrow. I want to turn off your mic. You see, because it's all interconnected. Tamika is the truth. What I do want to tell you is why <laughs> I want to start by saying happy belated birthday on behalf of us at I95.5. Thank you very much. So, I want to tell you thanks for being as bold and as raw as you are. And we think words like these come from a bad place. We think words like these put you in the category of being an outcast. When in all actuality, words like these pinpoint facts that there are persons out here who are brave enough to walk in the paths that have been designed or ordained for them. I always make reference to something Uncle Benny says, and he says, we are not here by choice, but we are here by purpose. And I fall in the category of persons who took a long time to identify their purpose and coming from you where you understand what you have to offer i say thank you and i say thank you for having me it's yes. been a pleasure to be at the hub well you know my audience wants you to come back so i have to um we i have will to organize make, i have to make arrangements <laughs> one last word tell people where they can reach you um if they need to get it if they need to get in contact with you, let everybody know where they can reach you. Sure. I am on Instagram, Threads, X, Facebook as Shaliza. Mm -hmm. That is S-H-A-L-I-Z-A-H-R. And you can contact me at 1-866-328-4565. Shaliza, thank you so much for this. I hope you all took essence out of what was being uttered today and not just focus on what we were saying in terms of the older persons in the government institutions. That was that is not what today was about. Today was putting the spotlight on self awareness and love. And I had the love guru with me today. So as always I wish you guys lots of love, lots of light. Tamika Castillo, Shaliza, she's going to come back. So I'm seeing my phone line is still going off, guys. She's going to be here again. Have a wonderful day and thank you. Thank you so yes. much. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, it's 12 noon. News to the top. I'm seeing my. Where's Janelle? Janelle has to come in. Yeah, so we have news.